Manhattan at a crowded matinee in Manhattan with a close friend. The story, which I reread for the first time since it appeared in The New Yorker in 1997, and the general air of expectancy around the film had made me eager to see it, but nothing could have prepared me for the impact of that first viewing. As my friend and I left the theater, we exchanged no more than two or three sentences about the film, both of us feeling overwhelmed and stunned into silence. I am consumed. I am cursed. There's so many memories, so much pain. I had successfully buried most of it until this movie brought it all rushing back. I had actually convinced myself I was happy, doing okay. I am so lost, so very alone. I just got back from milking 95 cows. It gives me time to think about what's going on. The credits roll, and I hurry to grab my coat and straighten my baseball cap. Fearful that every emotion I was laughing off to myself, in order not to let them out, would pour into the lobby. I could not look anyone in the eye for fear I would not know how to speak to them. I stumble out, confused, with a piercing pain in my chest and stomach. My phone rings, and I find it hard to breathe and speak to my ex on the line. I huff out. I just saw Brokeback Mountain. I really can't talk right now. When the movie ended, I just stayed in my seat through all the credits, giving time to compose myself before leaving. By the time I did get up and turn around, I was alone, as the other sitting behind me had already left, so no one saw how red my eyes were. I don't recall having a desire to go out and see Brokeback Mountain. I think I assumed it would just be all gay bashing, and who would want to see that? Plus, I didn't want to get my heart broken. You stagger out of the cinema in a daze. It hit me like a missile. I was stunned. I sat in the theater alone after everyone left and cried. It has made me think, reach out, contact the love of my life, consider making geographic moves. In short, it ripped down every wall I built around my heart. Why do some people walk out of the theater and want to go to dinner and talk about the weather, while others walk out to find that the horizon has been erased? Are we so powerfully affected by this movie because so much of our lives are numb, and this movie won't let us be numb? I met a friend at a party a month after I'd seen Broke Back Mountain. As usual, we discussed some movies we recently attended, and he asked me about the Ang Lee film. I blurted out, I can't get it out of my soul! I think Ang Lee should come over and get his ass to my house to help clean it up. It's not my fault I can't get it. And after he's done in your house, he needs to come to my house and help my kids with their homework. My teachers probably think I'm out of town and my husband's in charge. Brokeback provided us with a language of loss that we could all understand. Brokeback hit us directly in the heart and ripped our protective layers to shreds. It left us vulnerable and raw, but also alive. Brokeback cannot give meaning or purpose to our lives, but it has exposed the need. Shown us that we may have lost our direction and we need to reclaim it. We all have stories to tell, just as I'm sharing part of mine here. Our stories are fundamental to how we make sense of the world, how we know and understand one another through joy and suffering. Our stories embody our hopes and dreams and future possibilities. I'm Scottish, and I live in Spain, and I have just come virgin-like to Brokeback. It has dropped a depth charge into my very existence, blowing away all the digressive rubbish 50 years on this planet has filled my brain with, reminding me, perhaps just in time, that love in all its forms is the only imperative to which the soul should learn. And in the game, you should be very proud. This is a life-changing work of art. Remember those two shirts? That smell of grass and mountain air? Lingering no more? Your face a memory, our threadbare sleeves entwined. Come home to me now. I left pieces of me on the road for you to find. Is there anything more than darkness at the end of our journey? Jack! I live in the general region of Childress, where the movie was banned, and Remember the gay bashing and murders that were not uncommon around here during the late 70s, early 80s, and even still. A friend of mine, who for a while was more than that, was one of many innocent victims. I can't begin to imagine the impact this movie had, and will continue to have, in my life. Brokeback Mountain hit me like a mad truck. It ran right over my body and left tire tracks, indelible and permanent, on my soul. Every day for more than a month, during long walks, I confronted long, suppressed memories and struggled to come to grips with the demons those memories freed. My first memory, a happy one, stretches back to the age of five or six. I was holding my grandmother's hand as she introduced me to her cowboy pals, Bud and Manuel. 
From their scuffed leather boots to their weathered Stetsons, they looked like real men. Lean, muscular, with big calloused hands, strong faces, tanned by the sun. Bud owned a cattle ranch. Manuel was his foreman. They built barbed wire fences and rode the range together on horseback. Later on, I also realized they shared a bed. Bud and Manuel were gay, were gay cowboys, even though neither man would have known what gay meant 60 years ago. In those days, gay folk were called queers and homos. Nobody but Bud and Manuel would have dared ask if they were gay. But everybody sensed Bud belonged to Manuel. They were an inseparable pair, just like my grandmother's married friends. I thought a lot about Bud and Manuel after viewing Brokeback Mountain. They're long gone, but I wish they were here to share their story with me. How did they forge a relationship in rural California in the 1940s? Three, me three visual metaphors from Brokeback Mountain echo in the memories of every gay man who came out when Ennis and Jack were struggling to accept their love. The closet, the bloody shirts, and the tire line. Most gay men were wedged in closets so tight and airless, we could hardly breathe. We all had our bloody shirts, the secrets and the pain, the hurt that we experienced. We all feared the tire iron that could strike suddenly and violently. My gay friends have been attacked with everything from broken bottles and baseball bats to rocks and ice picks. Brokeback Mountain started me on a journey of self-healing. During my walks, I confronted many things I long suppressed. Everything came spilling out. With the help of my friends, I worked through it all. I wouldn't trade that journey for anything. It has led me to self-acceptance and self-understanding. I call it the Brokeback Miracle. Everyone should have the opportunity to see Brokeback Mountain. This masterpiece is a weapon against ignorance, intolerance, and the like. Rumbo thought that poetry can change a life. I am one of those that believe that Brokeback Mountain can change a life. I'm a 56-year-old divorced woman. I have such an incredible experience after watching Brokeback Mountain. I'm still sorting out my emotions. I had low expectations going into the movie due to all the hoopla and negative comments. I was not prepared in any way for what happened to me as I watched it. I have never understood how two people of the same sex can love each other like a man and a woman. I've tried in my life to come to terms with this, but without success. Then, as I was sitting there watching Ennis and Jack, it started to hit me with such power I couldn't control it. That's what Brokeback Mountain did for me. I know how beautiful love can be between two men. I have to stop now. Um, I'm crying and I'm overcome with emotion. Cost of movie tickets, $42 for six showings. Weight gained by a diet of popcorn, ginger mints, and cherry coke, 7.3 pounds. Boxes of Kleenex to dry unexplained bouts of crying, four. Money spent on eBay on I Heart Gay Cowboys t-shirt, $13 plus $5 shipping. Believing in love again as I watch the dozing embrace, Priceless. A lot of people, myself included, have been confused and a little bit freaked out by their strong emotional reactions to Brokeback Mountain. To wit, the tears that seem almost non-stop in the weeks after first seeing the movie or reading the book, and that seem to kick right back in at the drop of a cowboy hat. In the months that follow, some have said that it felt like Brokeback Mountain uncovered a well of sadness in them that they didn't know existed, which also applies to me. What didn't make sense to me was why people with seemingly little in common, male or female, straight or gay, happily married or divorced, single or partnered, all ended up the same way, sobbing as if our hearts would break. I think each of us who have had this reaction has experienced severe emotional wounding that, up until now, has never been healed by grieving. I also think that the reason we have not grieved up until now is that the wounding even though severe, was a slow process. So slow that many of us didn't even know we'd been hurt until we saw the slow, indisputable proof laid out before us on the screen or page and realized that, to varying degrees, it was the story of our wounding being told. 
I'm a lesbian, and I struggle to find happiness in my life. I have issues to resolve with a special lady in my life. I have some individuals in my past who linger in my memories as a disappointment. Of course, there are also straight women around me today who cannot return my affections, even if some of them, in another world, would feel safe to explore that side of themselves. So the movie hit home for me. The concepts of lost love, of impossible circumstances, of waiting, of hoping, of settling for crumbs when you are capable of giving so much more. I'm 61. No man who is gay does not live in the closet, betraying the truth about himself, denying who he is by presenting himself as who he is not, often many times a day. In the bank, in the laundry, at the gas station, to a neighbor, to a stranger. Not just for convenience, but out of fear, mistrust, anxiety that is a low-grade constant because no gay man has not seen the hostility, not encountered the contempt at one time or another. Few have not felt personally threatened. Many have felt the smashing. Every gay man at one time knows the toll this disdain or derision takes. But if it is sometimes dealt with ably, too often it is not. I grew up in Jackson, Wyoming, before it was a ski area. It's a way of life. The last century has changed around here a lot in Wyoming, a fair amount, but maybe not as much as the rest of the world. I think it has to do with the harshness of the landscape. A lot of people who come here don't appreciate the wild, sheer majesty of this part of the world. That is what I love about it the most. I have to say that when I am around large groups of people, I am apprehensive, but when I am in the middle of a ground blizzard, I feel comforted. I don't know what to expect from people, but while this country is unforgiving, if you respect it, then you will be rewarded with wonders beyond belief. A few days ago, I visited Porcupine Hills, which is near Broken Back now. What this broke back as an end it. On the way back up, I lost my footing and fell. I knocked over a rock and there was one of those lapel pins underneath. It was all rusted up, and but I could read the inscription. Are we over the rainbow yet? It was nobody's business but theirs. And yet above standing sentinel, a tree took in along with sunlight, the radiance of an arm, a leg embracing madly the other one, sheen of flank, thigh, dark hair light, bodies twisting, a vow, a threat, a promise of love beyond love's own tired meaning. They imagined themselves invisible, yet sighing as they did, the boughs in the wind watched, trembling as they did, the, the branches longed to embrace too, he embraced upon the pine's own scattered needles. Summer ended. Years passed, a tree cut down, fire opened. But within, the fire from 63 glowed there, an afterimage, the memory of a love long past, like the sun behind the clouds behind closed eyes.
But why did the teachers object at first? They were afraid of the reaction of the parents. Not one parent complained. Not one. Thank God for the next generation. Sometimes I'm proud of living here up north. Brokeback Mountain is to be used as a teaching tool in high schools. Hooray! <laughs> Makes me proud to be a Canadian again. The British Columbia Teachers Federation, Heterosexism and Homosexual Advocacy Group has developed a Brokeback Mountain lesson plan. Stated outcomes of the lesson plan are to encourage students, one, to analyze how this movie reflects current day attitudes towards gay people. Two, to understand how homophobia impacts people's daily lives. And three, to encourage students for personal choices in making the world more accepting of LGBT people. Among the questions given for discussion among students after viewing the film are the following. What factors influence homophobia in rural communities? How would they be similar to your local community? To what degree has life changed for rural LGBT youth since 1963 when this movie was set? What needs to change in society before Jack Twist's dream of him and Ennis owning a ranch together would be a non-event in a rural community? I grew up in a small town in southeast Oklahoma. I always knew I'd have to leave. And it tore me apart to have to decide between my family and home and a life. As a boy, I was blessed that my father took me camping and fishing in the Flat Tops Wilderness area of northern Colorado. In this time with him, I learned to appreciate the world and its natural beauty. Brokeback takes me back to those places. They conjure emotions of connectedness, yearning, and humility. I remember those long summer days and starlit nights, telling stories around the campfire as the air began to chill. The experience was palpable. I can smell the smoke. I can taste the elk meat, feel the damp cold, and hear the crackling embers. A year ago, my father suddenly passed away. My brother and I took his ashes up to the mountaintop lake where he taught us to fish as boys. It's one of the most important things I've ever done in my life. Where I am now, you can't see me. Way up high among the hazy blue, and you can't know that I'm watching in the sweet, cool dream forever. Up here in the sweet forever, I can read your mind, the mind you never deigned to share with me. It's funny how I know you better now, since the world and I parted company. If I could, I'd comfort you and tell you it's all right. I'd sing the song that you once sung to me, but instead I'll watch you See you safe in the sweet, cool dream forever. Ennis, being alone doesn't mend matters, and the whiskey ain't much help now either. But each new wrinkle, each gray hair I cherish in the sweet, cool dream forever. I heard your whispered vow to me. I heard your silent prayer. I know more than you did what you meant when you said, Jack. I swear, will you ever look up at the stars again and wonder what it's like up there? If you do, perhaps you'll see me in the sweet, cool dream forever. See me waiting for you here in the sweet, cool dream forever. When I first saw Brokeback, I questioned whether I was happy. After a month-long evaluation, I decided I am happy, but need to get some passion into my marriage. After 11 years with the same gorgeous guy, we have gotten comfortable and need to make some changes. Many of us married women have been asking the same questions. This has turned into a process of self-evaluation for many of us, which is good. Everyone needs to make changes in their lives, and if this movie has sparked it for us, it is a good thing. I, too, have lost that spark. I don't know how or why it happened. I turned 40 this month. And have been married for 14 years, have two children, a house, two dogs, and a white picket fence. Yeah, you name it, I have all the things in life I thought I needed. My husband got his master's, and I have been in this job for 16 years. For the first time, I looked at our marriage, we both did, and realized that we fell through the cracks. We used to have all sorts of wild sex. We broke the waterbed once. <laughs> what happened? Seeing this movie brought up so much I was not ready to handle. 
It made me think my life is so precious. I've been trying to get my husband to see the movie. I want him to connect. I don't like to nag, so I'll wait until he's ready. But we did have our first intimate talk last night after a long, long time. We both admitted that we needed each other. We're still in love. But it could go bad if we just let it go. This movie gave me courage, and it opened my eyes. Broke back mountain saved my life. I truly believe that. As a middle-aged married man, this story and movie have made me determined to re-examine my career and my job. I don't love what I do anymore, and it's time for a change. I need to take a long look at opportunities and see what I could be missing. I'm also determined to reconnect with old friends and strengthen the friendships that I already have. I'm more of an Ennis type, and expressing emotion, emotion is difficult for me. I want to tell my wife and kids more often that I love them. I want to hug my friends and tell them how special they are to me. I'm a heterosexual married mother of five kids. This movie changed my marriage. We've always had a good marriage, but after Broke Back, I saw how important it was for me to cherish my partner, to not take for granted the freedom we have to live and express our love, both verbally and intimately. <laughs> I feel like I've just woke up from a long sleep. I feel haunted by the idea that life is half over for me, and I am suddenly aware of how grateful I am for the treasure of my man who's still sexy, caring, deeply committed, and my best friend. I'm 39 female, totally heterosexual, and totally in love with my love and boyfriend since seeing Brokeback Mountain. Jack died at my age, and this was left lonely, with important words never said, and with deep regrets at my age. If I am going to have a life partner, I am going to be like Jack, and love him to the point of reckless abandon. Brokeback showed me what fear can do, and I don't want to have those regrets. One of my friends, a devoutly religious grandmother, Bought Brokeback Mountain at the local Walmart yesterday. After viewing it, she sent me a most touching email. Like so many straight people, she had no idea how society has treated gay folk. It's simply not in their experience. Well, seeing Brokeback Mountain for the first time three months ago, I started an intense email exchange with her about homophobia and how it affected my life. She knows now. And her reaction to the film shows it. It has taken nearly two hours to regain my composure. I need to talk about this film. It's so beautiful, so perfect, so unbearably painful to watch. From the moment Jack drives away, for the first of many times, and Ennis crumples in the alley, the truths start coming at me. The ugly truths, the hatred that haunts their love, the lies that they must both tell, the relentless onward movement of tragedy unfolding. I want all the Jacks and Edisons to live their lives in love and peace. I want the wretched hatred that flames in the eyes of the boss and Jack's father to soften with acceptance and understanding. I want both of those beautiful boys to sit down at the table together and have a piece of mother's cherry cake. I want no bloodied shirts in the closet. I want no closet at all. I want no reason to sob without comfort for two hours after watching a movie that reveals such excruciating pain that I saw, that I felt raw, bleeding from exposure to it. That's what I want. In the meadow on high, we would smell grass and pine, and embrace we would lie in the wild columbine, scalding tears of guilt, never said, you are mine. And my lover got killed in the wild columbine, weary life of regret. I will drown in wine, for my lover is dead in the wild columbine, soul wilted and bled of my death warning sign for my lovers long dead in the wild columbine. I will never forget till my day's last decline smell of grass when we met in the wild columbine. The single best part of this Brokeback Mountain journey, 
The part I hope that will far outlast the novelty of having our great work of art is that it has stirred a quiescent multitude of rural, suburban, and downright country gay men out of their settled, passive, and ultimately suffocating hiding holes. Having been disrespected or ignored by our so-called gay community, we have scanned the horizons and found a bleak landscape. By and large, we have settled some for abstinence, some for furtive bathroom encounters, some for sex with prostitutes, some for computer porn. Many of us have all but given up on the quest for a mate. The sad thing, and this applies to the real senior division here, such as myself, is that this is the time of life when engagement with the community and a friend or love really signifies the passage to a dignified rather than a pathetic old age. My cat is great company, but he can't bring me breakfast in bed on a day when the joints don't want to work. Even sadder is that those of us who have reached advanced years have a wealth of experience and hope to pass on if only anyone was listening or even thought that there was beauty and worth in aging. Most of a generation of talent, love, and experience was wiped out by AIDS. I can't speak for anyone but myself here, but being strong and authentic and forward-looking is a job that requires more fortitude than I can muster most days on my own. And I thought I was pretty much just that, on my own. I can see now that I underestimated you. You are out there. And you share common life experience and common fears and joys and sorrows with me. I hope crying over or celebrating this film brings us together. I need to know that all of you are out there ready to move forward. And I really hope that some of us can become real friends. And most of all, I hope I can find my compliment out there hiding on a ranch or in a flat or, best of all, on a beach in Hawaii. It has been more than a decade since I slept in the arms of another man, largely by my own choice, for I will not settle for Mr. Right now. I have worked too hard and paid too dearly to become a man. I am to disrespect myself with one-night stands or weekend flings. Tempting though that might be, I am worth love. And so are you all. I'm not sure I'm representative of any big demographic, but Brokeback Mountain has had one striking impact in the way I perceive the culture around me lately. It really offends me to see pop culture icons and entertainers resorting to the old stereotypes of gays for humor. Most entertainers would stop dead in their tracks about jokes that stereotype women or African Americans, but with gays, that type of offensive stereotyping has never been questioned until now. Brokeback Mountain has put a universal, dignified human face on gay humanity. People may be taking a while to admit that many families everywhere have members who are not straight, but Brokeback Mountain delivers the stunning lesson that individuals' collisions with their gayness is a matter of supreme seriousness, maybe tragedy, maybe even majesty, and that anyone who wants to make fun of it is seriously embarrassing him or herself. I dragged my rather conservative hubby to see Brokeback Mountain. I warned him not to make comments or anything during the film. He actually behaved pretty well. Anyway, the movie ends, and I'm crying like a baby, and he turns to me and says, They shouldn't make movies like this. Uh-oh, here we go. I don't need this right now. What do you mean? The ending was so sad. I don't like feeling like crap after a movie. Oh, honey. What? Am I the only person crying in the theater? No, there are a couple guys crying over there, and there's that girl. And um, I found myself having to hold back tears, too. So, the big, macho, conservative, sports-loving Stallone fan actually loved the movie. He's getting so lucky tonight. <laughs> I've been feeling pretty devastated as of late. This may sound odd, but weirdly enough, a movie about a relationship between two men contributed to my recovery greatly. It's bizarre, and I can't figure it out. The heat generated from the movie screen, getting the chance to read the forum, sharing everyone's stories, squealing and giggling, it's amazing therapy. And my awareness of myself as a sexual being, well, I kind of feel like my vital lights been reignited. <laughs> How strange is that? I'll be in Montana next month. I got family out there, and then cowboys had better look out. It cracks me up that some folks got all offended by the content of Brokeback. In all likelihood, 
It'll cause more straight cowboys to get laid than any other movie in history. <laughs> We never meant to hurt anyone, but we couldn't help what we were doing. We were in love.
full explanation for why there is so little talk of Alma and Maureen. I'm a straight woman raised in a patriarch patriarchal to the extreme household. I can tell you their suffering is par for the course. We know it, we feel it, and we live it in one way or another every day of our lives. We know more than we care to about the emotionally unavailable and cheating men. Although I believe that without the suffering of families, mothers, daughters, wives, that this movie would not have had the impact that it does, and would not be the work of art that it is, this fact remains, that we already know about the women. We are laid low by this movie because we can finally connect to masculine pain, because we have not had occasion to see two men in a timeless romance. They are our focus in this movie. When Jack says that truth is that he misses Enna so bad and he can hardly stand it, Jake Gyllenhaal made this movie so real and human that I will never see men, especially gay men, the same, ever. They became something new, something fully human. I never knew I was missing something. I thought I had empathy. I had nothing. Since now I fully identify and connect with the men, they are telling my story, as well as the women. The two men also have equal power, and so we as women are drawn to tell them to tell our story in the way never told before by women characters. It is a powerful thing for us to have our hearts rendered anew in male bodies. I think that's why the men are so stunning. How is it? that I never knew. Through all the lonely years ahead, the things that I would mourn the most were all the words we never said. Grieving still for vows unkept and of the music still unplayed, with tears unwept that flood the soul for promises we never made, with efforts to recall your smile, call up a stranger's face instead, when memory fails and vision pales, I'll regret those words unsaid. As time winds down and days go short, and evening falls with vespers rung, my tears well up and fill my heart with all the songs we left unsung. Drowned in the silence of your eyes as you deign to follow where I lead, the sadness lingers in my heart, still haunted by those words unsaid. And when my last mistake was made, in a place where lost illusions stir, I'll mourn the chances left untaken, and all the dreams that never work. Draw me a picture, tell me a lie, paint it with stars on a midnight sky, send me a signal, show me the way, back down the road to our yesterday. The place once safe is ours no more. I draw me that picture, tell the truth and not lie. Painted in rainbows on a brilliant blue sky. You'll send me a signal, you'll show me the way. Back over the mountain to a happier day. That plan, so safe, will be ours once more. It's all right, I'll wait just a little bit more. This life I live, so your memory I'll keep. I love you, I miss you, and I'll see you in my sleep. Strong arms, moist, warm breath. Soft song memories held near time. A rainbow stops. How can I, how can we care so damn much for two people who aren't real? This movie is a part of my skin. What can I do? I'm a 33-year-old man. I've been married for 10 and a half years and I have four kids. The last eight months of my life have been turbulent to say the least. And I think that's why Brokeback Mountain has had such an impact on me. I've lived like Ennis all my life. I was born into a Christian family that lived by the book. And I've grown up doing the same. And all the while, having an internal struggle that I had hoped would go away. I secretly liked guys all my life. I got married to a nice girl who actively pursued me. Marriage was expected. To come out to my family would have been the most disastrous thing I could do. 
we were perceived as the perfect family, I being one of five children, and I was not going to bring shame to my family. Incomes broke back mountain. I was in shock. I couldn't believe it. This movie rocked my world. It shook me to the core. So much that old baggage that I had been carrying for so long finally loosened enough that I could drop it and I could take a look at it. After many counseling sessions, much pain and looking into my life and my wife's life, we decided it was best that we divorce. During our counseling sessions, I revealed that I had a thing for men and that I had felt this way all my life. But we decided to try to maintain a friendly relationship for ourselves and even more so for our children. I moved into our spare room. I find depression knocking on my door regularly. Life is hard right now. If nothing else, Brokeback Mountain calls you into action. If this movie awakens something in you, you have to act. My eyes have been opened. Brokeback Mountain has cured me, as only a good religious experience could. I'm known for my gloom and doom, but Brokeback has rocked me to the core like nothing before. I haven't felt depressed since I downloaded the trailer last fall. Sadness, maybe, but with happiness standing strongly beside it. If I ever do get depressed again, I will listen to the soundtrack, face the sadness head on, have a good cry, let it all out, feel the weight lift. I'm in love with this new life experience. I've read that the high of a new love can last about a year, so we'll see. I can't help feeling that I'm not the same person I was before all of this started. I, I feel like the past has been wiped away, and for the first time, I feel that life is not as bad as I thought it was. I am 21, and I'm still in the closet. I'm pretty much one of the guys. I'm not remotely interested in the gay scene. I don't hate it, it's just not my thing. Even though I'm in LA, it's pretty hard to find someone like myself, so I've never had a boyfriend. Before I saw Brokeback Mountain, I felt I would end up alone. I never thought I would find a guy and have a fulfilling relationship. And now as I type this, I hate myself for giving up that dream without a fight. The idea of finding true love came back into my life. Brokeback Mountain helped me come out of the closet to myself. I have a rather uplifting story for all of you in the closet. Oddly enough, it begins with the horrifying events at the Oscars. I was so unbearably depressed about that awful night and couldn't imagine how something so terrible could have happened. Crash. Are you kidding me? Anyway, the next day I came home from school early and my older brother was home because of spring break. He asked me what I thought of the Oscars and I admitted that I hated it. I wasn't out to him technically, but I always felt it was the proverbial elephant in the room. I knew he knew, we just never talked about it. He continued to prod me and ask me why I hated it, what award it was that upset me so much, and finally I said it. I had seen Brokeback Mountain. Last month, I came out to my mother. She's 93. Of course, she knew. Of course. I came, out, I came from the Jack and Hannes era. We didn't talk about it for a lot of reasons. But my dear mother asked why I was so upset. I told her some of my friends had committed suicide 40 years ago because their parents rejected them after learning they were gay. Yes, she did. I am different, my mother replied. God bless her. And God bless Brokeback Mountain and everyone who brought it to the screen. The miracle continues. For the first time in my life, I feel hope. I had shut down completely without realizing it. I just existed. That's all. Existed. This morning, I woke up happy. Really, really happy. For the first time in a long time. Life has opened up. I've dated for the first time in my life. I've lost over 30 pounds. I've worked my ass off. I'm in two plays, and I'm recording my third CD. Such a great rush began, and has continued since that cataclysmic night back in mid-January. Since seeing Brokeback, I find myself looking at men with uncontrollably dopey eyes. You could not get any dopier than my eyes right now. Brokeback Mountain allowed me to come to terms with some issues of my past. 
But somewhere, lurking in the back of my mind, I knew there was more. I just couldn't find it. In the last few days, I have pieced together my thoughts, fears, and needs to explain to myself what happened to me. It was after reading the story three times, searching my soul long and hard, and facing what I knew would be the truth, that I made a radical decision. I quit my job after 19 years. I can't believe I'm putting this in writing. I'm staying on, to, on it to wrap up some projects, but I'm out at the end of the month. I'm looking for a job, but no prospects yet. I'm divorced, 57 years old, with two kids, five grandchildren, and I did the stupidest and bravest thing I may have ever done in my life. I can't live in misery for fear of what the future may hold. Not anymore. I am laughing to myself, at myself, because though on some level I'm scared to death, I feel a lightness in my heart that I have not felt in forever. None of you made my decision for me, but all of you enveloped me in love, compassion, and understanding. You have helped me come to terms with myself and what I need for myself, not for what I thought other people expected. Bless you all. Brokeback Mountain puts everything in perspective now. An opportunity for Brokeback speech came up this past weekend when we were away in the mountains, having, yes, a broke back vacation. It's not the season now for snow, but heavy clouds, low temperatures, and a chilly forecast combined to give me a chance to say, got a snow tonight for sure. How could I please I wasn't myself? Has broke back mountain given you hope and made joy more possible? I know it has for me. For instance, my partner and I have definitely found a new spiritual center and more joyful expression of our relationship. I also feel more able to share myself at a deep level with others. That's part of self-acceptance, I suppose. This was what I was missing all my life. I called Heidi, my Jack, and said yes to that sweet little cow and calf operation. It's going to be a sweet life. We're not like other couples, you and I. Our dreams are like clouds up in the sky. Holiday, and 
suddenly now I have radically expanded the base of my friends. Even though the gay movement has always paid lip service to diversity, I have always found that it was the pretty and the young who have always been most valued, not folks from blue and white collar jobs. Everyday folks. The ideology of the movement has always been advocated coming out. However, if you don't conform to many of these stereotypes, then you come out to avoid, to nothing. The forum is a community where communication is the essential element. People are allowed to express their hearts no matter where they are along in their development, and that's a good thing. One of the reasons that Ennis was unable to move forward in his life was because he couldn't see where he could go or what he could be. What this place has given me is a place where I can be myself and see my way forward with people who are like friends and family to me, regardless of their gender, their age, or what they look like, and that's a really good thing. Something worth treasuring. The most important thing about Brokeback was not its commentary on the consequences of the closet, which is what I think most gay men who have seen the film relate to at first, but it's the re-examination of the traditional constructs of masculinity. As a gay man who grew up feeding and corralling cattle, building fences, and working summers in an oil field, rascabout outfit, or in an auto repair shop, I have to say that deep down, Jack Twist makes sense to me. The bedrock of my personality, my identity, was laid down in those hard places and in those quiet times. Brokeback Mountain has much to say to men about how often the regime of masculinity demands the beating human heart as a sacrifice. Brokeback allows gay men to declare false and folly, the rigid, reactionary tyranny of the cowboy myth, a myth that Hollywood has coddled and perpetuated. We can be emancipated from this myth. The truth is, the mythical Hollywood cowboy is emasculated. The real cowboy finds his manhood in the freedom to say who he is, to be who he is, to make his own way. Brokeback requires a man to do his work. It is honest work. The work of opening your heart and exposing it to cold mountain air, laying yourself bare as the ice-scaped rock. If you have either the desire or the ability to do that kind of work, you have to be brave. Bravery is a virtue in limited currency. Who among us is brave enough to lead? From my vantage point on the mountain, I see vast territories to explore. I see that there are trails through the great American desert laid down long ago. I see it in passes through the peaks. Go west, young man. It is our destiny to be better than you. I'll be cast in the spirit. 